Tickler opens with this beautiful artwork of some storytelling on parchment or burlap that reminds me of the opening sequences of both The Wind Waker and Skyward Sword. The latter especially. I just really want to point out the Sheikah eye here and how the droplet forms the tear part of the symbol before falling, much in the same way as the Sheikah technology does in the shrines when Link gets a new rune ability. We get another shot of the trees here, and man, this game's nature just looks incredible. And notice something different between these two shots? It seems to imply that Breath of the Wild will have changing seasons, which is pretty cool. Next is another shot of some artwork which seems to show some sort of people farming, but it's hard to say if these are primitive people, or Hylians, or some sort of other race that we haven't seen yet. If it is a new race, they're civilized enough to use farming tools and domesticated horses, though. This sweeping shot near the Twin Peaks, which you may remember from E3, shows a man walking across the bridge here. It isn't Link, but a new NPC that we haven't seen before, and just guessing from his attire and spear, or maybe it's a walking stick, he may be a hunter or traveler of some kind. And there's a ruined guardian, just thought I should point it out. Next scene shows a conflict between two blue Bokoblins and what seems to be two NPCs. Some have speculated that this is Link and a companion, but based on the clothes this might not even be Link at all. Either way, the other NPC in the back seems to be fighting too and has white hair. And so far usually white hair is a trait associated with the Sheikah tribe, so maybe there's a connection there. Or maybe I'm reaching on that one, who knows. So, could we be getting travel companions in Breath of the Wild, or do we just randomly run into people that need help, and help defend them from monster attacks? Here we get a good look at a settlement or village of some kind with a large structure that sort of reminds me of the bazaar in Skyward Sword. And what's with the giant wooden horse head? Oh, and dogs confirmed. Dogs confirmed in Breath of the Wild. This is an important detail. The next artwork piece seems to hint at a fully realized city, not just small villages, as we see large buildings here lined up nicely. And could that be Hyrule Castle behind them? Possibly making this artwork depicting Castletown? Moving on, we get a sweeping shot of a larger village. These two shots are packed with detail. We get banners, or maybe that's laundry, and we see villagers tending to crops. So for anybody who was worried that this game was going to be super devoid of life, we've got really big towns here. Moving on, whoa. First thing to note here is that Link has the Master Sword in its classic scabbard, but unlike the shot we saw at E3, the Master Sword is in perfect condition. Does this imply that we have to restore and revive it, much like we did in Skyward Sword and the Wind Waker? Or is this some sort of flashback or past time travel segment. And just who the heck is this guy? Falco here. I'm fine. Here we see a large bird-like man fly through the air towards this flying ship. We'll get back to the ship in a moment, but first, let's talk about the Birdman here. There's some theories flying about already about who he is and what race he is. The most obvious answer would be Rito, the bird people seen in The Wind Waker. Since we've already seen the Koroks a race exclusive to the Wind Waker, I wouldn't rule them out based on the timeline. However, a lot of people have been quick to point out the many physiological differences between the Birdman here versus the Rito. Well, I'm actually really on board with the idea of them being Rito to be honest, but that's just me personally. But here's why. The Rito are a race shown to have evolved quite a lot. Remember that they evolved from the Zoras meaning that these are the same race. These two. Fishman, Birdman, same race somehow, I don't know. So if the race can evolve from fish person into bird person, who is to say they can't evolve further into even more different looking bird people? Plus, let's keep in mind what the Zora look like in the decline timeline. 
even more different from their more modernly depicted fish people form. There are also thoughts that these bird people are descended from the Loft Wings who remained at Skyloft at the end of Skyward Sword, pointing out the similarities between the clothing designs of the Skyloftians and this guy. I'd also like to point out, and thanks to Darren, one of our copy editors at Zelda Informer, for pointing this out to me, that this could be the return of the Foka from Zelda 2, and oh my god, I hope I pronounced that correctly. But these guys were all hostile, so part of me isn't sure about this being the case. And what is this ship that he's flying up to? Well, if you remember back from the E3 footage and trailers, there was this large floating object, and I believe this to be the very same one. Just look at the shape of them both here, even the round foot at the end. And hey, Birdman here has a design on his scarf that resembles the airship. Nice detail. And it seems that this giant airship that we're floating up to seems to be powered by Sheikah technology as well. Moving on, get a look at this next shot. What are the story implications here? It appears to me that this shows that these guardians are protecting Hyrule Castle as they're facing away from it and lined up around it. Or at least they were at some point and have been turned against the Hylians. For more information on how that theory could work, I recommend watching this video by Zeltic, which you can check out here. Immediately after, we see Link battling some guardians, and hey, it looks like using the bow isn't the only way to take on these guys, as it had previously been shown. But here, Link takes a swing at it with his axe. This person. Who is this person? A lot of speculation points to it possibly being Zelda herself, though the clothes are definitely different than anything we've seen her wearing before. Well, look at what Link is wearing and try that argument again. We only get a glimpse of her here, but we see her blonde ponytail, some adventuring gloves and belts, and clothes that look similar to Link's champion shirt, but much more expensive and fancy looking. And what is she holding? Is it a Sheikah slate of her own? If it is, then could it be that Zelda communicates to Link through her own Sheikah Slate? Keep in mind that it wouldn't be the first time we've seen something like that, as Tetra did use the Gossip Stone in The Wind Waker to do just that, and I always believed that to be of Sheikah origin as well. Especially since they share a name with the Gossip Stones of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, which just happen to have the Sheikah Tearing Eye symbol on them. That can't be simple coincidence, right? The next shot shows what seems to be Hyrule Castle, um, exploding? And yep, this is definitely Hyrule Castle, as it shares an identical design to Hyrule Castle, as seen in Twilight Princess. And the magic effects happening around here look to be the work of Calamity Ganon as well. Next is a look at what seems to be Castletown in absolute ruin. How do I know it's Castletown? Well, look, it's right at Hyrule Castle. And just look, this appears to be the fountain from Twilight Princess's Castle Town. And even the banners are the same. Whatever happened here absolutely decimated Castle Town. And look, Link is sparkling. I really don't know what to say about that. And here we see Link with Master Sword kneeling before someone. I'm also guessing this to be Zelda, or at least somebody royal and important, but the clothes are definitely different from the last time we saw her in this trailer. Or maybe one of them is Impa? But again, I wouldn't put much stock into what people are wearing as a way of identifying them. Again, just look at Link's outfit. So maybe these are two different characters, or perhaps she just changed clothes when going out adventuring as here she's seen outdoors, while in the second shot, she seems to be in some sort of well-intact castle. It's hard to say at this point, since in both cases, we don't get to see very much of them at all. And that's the trailer, a lot of detail packed in there. But we were lucky enough to get a second look at the game during the Game Awards, where Bill and Nate from Nintendo Treehouse sit down and play through a shrine quest. First thing to point out is that this guy, Cass, is another Birdman. He appears to be the same race based on his clothes and the fact that he's a giant Birdman, but clearly his design is based on a different bird than the design basis for the Birdman scene in the previous trailer, which I'd like to add further to my Rito argument. 
If these two bird dudes can look this different from each other and still be the same race, why can't they be related to these guys too? And Cass here seems to be friendly, so it doesn't look like these bird people are enemies in Breath of the Wild either. And did anybody else notice that the music he plays on his accordion is actually the music from the E3 trailer? Let's yeah, have a listen. Uh, and as min minstrels are wont to do, he's gonna sing to us. Fire up the accordion and where the dragon's mouth meets the serpent's jaws. Shrine sleeps in the forest of normal cost. Okay, we got this. And watch what he's saying. He gives Bill a hint about where his destination is. Notice what happens next. The map doesn't immediately pop up. They actually have to go based on what he's saying. They don't go to follow a waypoint, but rather the player has to find their own way based on the clues given to them. It's a nice detail missing from most games these days and the total opposite of dousing in Skyward Sword, which I personally despised. Also, it seems we're definitely off the Great Plateau at this point, and rather in a more tropical looking environment, rather than the forest we've seen so much of already. Bill is accosted by what appears to be a Lazalfos and gets roughed up, so he opens his inventory to heal himself. And just look at all the stuff he has! There's so much customization of all his gear and ingredients that it would take ages to cover it all. And Link's outfit looks pretty great too, very combat ready. Bill's charge-in tactics prove fruitless though as the Lazalfos zap him to death. So Nate takes a more stealthy approach. And is he stealth swimming under the water? As his head remains submerged and his stamina meter, which must be upgradable since it has a second bar around the left side, drains while he does this. And this bit here is just kind of awesome. The combat looks great. Uh, you're running out of arrows. Never. Uh, just so you know, you were down to two arrows. Oh, there you go, nice. And the Lazalfos that spring out at Link appear to have been camouflaged, or as Bill says, Ch chameleon-like powers. And after Nate takes them down with some well-timed flurry rushes, boom, and he's done. We get a good look at this big fella who I think we've seen a similar enemy in the E3 trailer. Also, notice how this big guy avoids the bombs that Link is throwing at him, demonstrating just how much smarter the enemies are in this game compared to previous Zelda games. When Link defeats him and picks up his weapons and loot, we get confirmation that this enemy is in fact Breath of the Wild's version of the Moblin. The segment ends with them avoiding going inside the cave, to avoid spoilers, but we do get to see that there is another statue of Hylia tucked inside and glowing, just like the one seen inside the Temple of Time during our E3. And that about wraps up our analysis of the Game Awards trailer and gameplay footage. Did we miss any details, and are you guys excited for this game or what? 